Well, good morning, everyone. Um, we're going to begin our study uh, again, uh, dealing with putting judges on a line. And uh, but we're going to begin with a word of prayer. Dear gracious Heavenly Father, we are so thankful uh, for the time that we have to study and for the blessings of the past Sabbath. And, um, and we are looking forward to the blessings of this week. We know, Lord, that uh, you have been giving us light and um, sometimes more than we can take in. But we ask for your your guidance as we continue to receive this light and for your strength to walk in the light. We ask, Lord, that this light can shine to those in darkness around us, and that they can respond step by step as they see the attractiveness of the truth in your words. And... Um, we need your help here in this study. There are many things we have to sort out. And um, I pray that your Holy Spirit can speak to our hearts and that we can have open and clear minds. And we pray this and thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> well, good morning again, everyone. So I, I had to look at... Um, uh, the study that we had yesterday, on Thursday, uh, the end of that study. And I was talking about the connection between 9-11 and November 9. Now, the, the idea here, and, and we're going to have to draw this out, and I can't remember what, what scripture specifically we were looking at um, prior to that, other than we were looking at this separation that it happened in the movement. Um, and one of the things that I had pointed out was Ezekiel. And so I'm going to have to try to get all my thoughts gathered together here. But in Ezekiel, we remember that we have this second vision of Ezekiel in Ezekiel chapter 8, and that it occurs on the sixth year, the sixth month, and the fifth day. And that uh, the next day, when this vision sort of completes, um, that's going to be the sixth month, the sixth day, and the sixth year. So it's going to be the symbol of 666. And so we have this connection here with uh, the Sunday law, because that's what's going to be represented in Ezekiel 8 and 9, and this symbol of 666. And of course, this refers to the destruction of Jerusalem. Um, <clears throat> being predicted by Ezekiel, uh, 666 years in the, um, the 666th year of Jehoiachin's captivity, 666 years after Jehoiachin is taken captive in 597. So 70 AD is going to be 666 years later. Now, I was relating this also to, to Jeff's message, to this transition, that we, we had this whittling down of these messages, of, of these groups of people. And, and so I'm trying to remember all the thoughts that, that, that we, we had on Thursday, but this connection between 11.9 and 9.11, what, what's, the, what's the obvious connection between 11.9 and 9.11? A mirror. Mirror. Okay, it's a mirror. And we know that we have at 9.11, uh, we mark uh, the first day of the first month as well, right? That's how Jeff does the line. So we're going to draw these out. Um, Just we'll see what what I, yep. Adelio shared with me an interesting point with 9-11. Okay. Um, if you go to the, the pie number, the pie search, and you type in 9-11, it comes up as the, the 1533rd decimal. Oh, okay. Wow. So that would tie in to August 11th, 1844, is the beginning of the 1533 days. Yeah. 
with the glorious manifestation of the power of God. And mm. we had we had already noted that 1844, I think it was, or 2520, either, I can't remember which one was, the, the 25th, 2520th sequence, or maybe it's all the way around, but the 1844 and 2520 as uh, the Pi search decimal uh, connect. Okay. Yeah, I think so. Um, Iran would know that probably. What was the question? Uh, the Pi search, where we find. Uh, um, Stephen, can you repeat the question? Yeah, so 1844, I think it's the 25, 20th. It's the other way around. You have to search for 2520, and it's in the 1844 position. Right, OK. So 9-11 is 1533. This is another? Yep, I, see, I can see that here. Pretty interesting. So we should be familiar all with, with this idea, right? That we're gonna have uh, midnight is gonna be the fifth day of the fourth month, that's halfway between here. And then you're gonna have the first day of the fifth month, right? So Jeff would mark this as 9-11, and this is the Sunday law, and this is midnight and the midnight cry, right? So we, so we had this, this idea, that this is the first day of the first month. But we also had a line in which the first day of the first month was November 9th. Now, why did we do that? Why did we have this be April 19th? People know what I'm talking about. Was it because it was the first, it represents the first day of the first month? Okay. Yeah. So, but why did we have this represent the first day? Why did, what is it about November 9th that we could then mark it as the first day of the first month? Because we had 9-11 as the first day of the first month, but now we, we had this new line later on, that we could mark this as the first day of the first month. Is this April 9th? Or is this what's the April 19th? I was That's, just going to ask you the April 19th. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So why did we put, why did we do this? What was it about November 9th that we paralleled with, with April 19th? April yeah, 19th. this made up. April 19th was. Well, April 19th is the first disappointment. So was November 9th the first disappointment? Mm -hmm. I think it was. Yeah, non it was a non fulfilled prediction. Right. So, so we had a disappointment here. Now, this, this, this was just a temporary thing that, that was noticed when we were dealing with July 18th. Um, because we're also going to have here July 18th, 1844, right? There's going to be those three days. Now, we said that this the great disappointment paralleled July 18th. So we did do that, right? We put July 18th. 2020 over here. So we had November 9th here as the first disappointment and July 18, 2020 is as the second disappointment, correct? After July 18th. Anybody remember that? 
You're saying July 18 lines up with October 22nd? Yeah, that's that's what the movement did, right? So the movement after after this disappointment, Daniel Fontenot was, uh, you know, probably the one most you know adamant about this. But we had paralleled this disappointment of the Millerites, which is October 22nd. We're going to put that um, as July 18th. Now, I, I agreed with it, but I agreed with it differently in that this July 18th, this is Samuel Snow's letters, right? So this July 18th is, is actually typifying this, this October 22nd, so thus typifying this July 18th. Does that make sense to people? Because Snow's letters, um, are, are this movement, right? So this movement really expect, uh, typified this. And remember, this is the 187th day from the first day of the first month, right? So this last confirming the covenant letter that's published on July 18th, three days before midnight, it's symbolizing this message of July 18th that we're going to experience. Somebody's microphone, probably Stevens, that we're getting lots of noise from. <laughs> Does this make sense to people? I mean, this has been presented before, but we might have forgot about it. Can I ask where the five, fifth day of the fourth month, where, where did it come from? The fifth day of the fourth month? Yeah. Well, where did it come from? That's July 27th, 21st in 1844. Okay. <clears throat> and that's Ezekiel chapter one, verse one and two, because Ezekiel is, is, uh, gets his first vision on the fifth day of the fourth month in 592 BC, and it is July 21st. And then his last vision that's recorded in chapter 40 is going to be on the 10th day of the seventh month, and it is October 22nd. Okay. I just want I just want to make sure the um I knew it somewhere like that. I just want to make sure. Yeah, okay. So so when we take and 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 what's the connection here between um April 19th and July 18th. How many days is that? Ninety something. So it's April to July. That's about ninety days. Okay. Add ten, isn't it? Right. So this 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 period of time from here to here. This this is. Um, uh, there's something. Forget about that for now. I don't want to go into that because we're going to have to deal with all of Samuel Snow's letters and the structures. So for now, what we, we what we can see is that Samuel Snow's letters, they start over here. Where do they start? Uh, it's uh, February 16th. Yeah, so February 16th, Snow writes his first letter, which is published six days later on the 22nd, right? But this is all part of the structure of Samuel Snow's letters, right? So this is going to be from here to here, 153 days, right? So, so there's all of these symbols about July 18th, 1844, that if we go into the symbol of Samuel Snow's letters, the structure, because there's going to be a structure in here that is also, you know, you got the June 22nd date, 
And that June 22nd date is going to be uh, 63 days from here. And this is going to be 63 days to here. And that's going to be the structure of, of what happened from June 9th. Um, so this is all going to fit into Jeff's structure of the Levitical chiasm. So I don't want to go into that right now. The main thing is I'm trying to say is that November 9th and 9-11 are connected. And this gives us a connection to take this July 18th as representing or typifying, literally, it, it, I mean, it typifies October 22nd because Samuel Snow's letters is typifying this, but it's also typifying our July 18th, 2020. So in a sense, this is July 18th, 2020 as well, right? And this is about the prediction before midnight, these three days. So, I mean, we're going to have to come back to this, but the, the point that I'm making is that, um, and I'm not making it very well, but that this is a typical line, right? Samuel Snow's letters are typical of something. They're first typical of this line, but they're also typical of our line dealing with July 18, 2020. So in order to understand our lines properly, we need to understand Millerite history properly. The big problem that I had with the priests, Levites, Nethanims, and all these staggered lines in our history is that it doesn't exist in Millerite history. And if Millerite history is the template, then we would have to look at this history first to understand our history. Now, the thing that we can see is there is this typical line of this July 18th. But in a sense, this whole line of Samuel Snow's letters is a zoom in to midnight because it's going to be at Boston. This is the prediction before midnight, right? And it's going to be at Boston that midnight occurs. So these three days, which come from the story of Ezra and other places, but Ezra 7 to 10 these three days, which also give us this same structure. These three days are about a symbol of the prediction before midnight. So we have to look at July 18th as about the prediction before midnight. So if we wanna understand our line where it zooms in on the line where we're gonna have, you know, uh, Raphia and Paneum here, that is the line of the Levites, uh, the, the, what happens to Adventism before the Sunday law, then we would have to say that our message is zooming into, it's taking Samuel Snow's as the template for our message. And that this is where we're basically in this three days before midnight, whatever that means, whatever, wherever midnight is going to be marked. Is, is that helpful for people or am I just confusing you? No, it is a bit helpful. Okay. Um, trying to make sense of all of this and, and putting it on a line it, it looks better while it's sitting there and then we can kind of make those matches up yeah it's, now we're doing right. like you say we do have to study more on the millerite history right now now notice here on this line we have this uh 9 11 and this 11 9 so up here, we have 9-11 and 11-9. So Gideon is a zoom into November 9th, 2019. That is, what we were studying here in Gideon is addressing this message that comes out after um, uh, the message of, which we don't have in here, but that's because we, we had it in here, but then I was focusing upon Gideon. But we do have Sisera with Deborah and Barak in here, right? And that's going to be Parmenders. And Parmenders is going to end, and then this message of Gideon happens. And, and what we're trying to do right now is we're going back in the story of Gideon, and we're going to try to draw this on a line in more detail, right? That's what we're doing here. So if we're going to take the message of Jeff, Jeff is the prophet, right? But there's going to be this transition that happens, 
And, and the message of Gideon is best based upon Jeff, right? So we're saying that in the story of Gideon, we're going to be able to take each of these events, each of these stories, and we're going to be able to place them upon a line, right? We're going to, we can actually have specific events. So we're actually studying uh, right at the beginning of Gideon's message. That's why we're looking at 11.9. Well, I went back over uh, that yesterday, um, Jeff's presentation on November 9th, getting a lot of stuff out of it. Okay. Um, okay. So, yeah, I mean, which, which specific presentation? You're talking the ones he did just before November 9th? Okay, so let's go here. I know it's it's taking us a lot of time to get through uh, putting judges on a line, but I think we're getting somewhere. Right, so we have this message of Jeff and, and that message of Jeff we could mark, I mean, we could start marking it 1989, but I think in some ways we would market it at 9-11, right? Because this prophet, right? The Lord sent a prophet unto the children of Israel. So that's going to be the message that Jeff gives from 1989 to 9-11, right? That covering that, not just that history, but the message of the messages of the first angel's message. So if we're going to um, take this call of Gideon, right? So this is what we had talked about. Um, we're going to have this uh, Gideon is this angel of the Lord comes. And is this, is, is this going to be at 9-11? Or are we going to mark it somewhere else? Okay, so, so Judges 611 is verse number 6666. So that's the 6,666 verse from the beginning of the Bible. Yep. Okay. <clears throat> okay, so we have 611, the call of Gideon. And, and we're saying there, an angel of the Lord came and sat under an oak, which was in Oprah that pertaineth unto Joash the Abba, Abba Ezrite and his son Gideon, threshed wheat by the winepress to hide it from the Midianites. So, so we had already addressed this, but can we put this at 9-11? And if so, can we say that the message of Gideon, because we've already said that Judges covers from 9-11 to 2023, based on chapter two. But can we say that the message of Gideon is a repeat and enlarge of this history, a specific aspect of this history? And you're starting off with verse 611. Yeah. Yeah, the 6,666 verse. Well, we have an angel. We have the O. Um, oh, uh, threshed wheat, wine press. Uh, yeah. Okay. So we have these symbols, but but I'm saying that that specifically we're placing Gideon at eleven nine, not at nine eleven. But can we say that eleven nine is connected to nine eleven? Yes. Okay. And so. So this call of Gideon, which is going to be the message of July 18th, is connected to 9-11, even though we mark it at 
Uh, yeah, we okay. can, I'm, I'm thinking we can do this. Okay, good. Now, there is another thing we know, um, you know, and this is for some people maybe rather obscure, but, you know, Stephen is born 11,900 days before 9-11, right? And that is 32 years and seven months on the Gregorian calendar. And, and so, of course, Stephen is one of the people involved in this, this message, specifically in chronology. And we can see, though, that we have that 11.9 tied to 9.11 as well, so 11,900 days. And also to the symbol of 273, different order, 327, but still 32 years and seven months. <clears throat> And, and that is, of course, the number of months that it, years and months that it takes for the Islamic calendar to have Ramadan come around again to line up with our calendar. So, so this relates to the message of July 18th dealing with Islam. So we have all of these symbols here um, that we can attach to 9-11 and 11-9. We can tie them together. So the call of Gideon is based upon the message of September 11th. But it is a message that comes at 11.9. That actually seems logical. Okay, right. So... And, and so we can see that this message that we had of July 18th was tied to the message of the past. Jeff gave this message. He's this prophet from 1989 to 9-11, of course, afterwards as well. But that becomes this next major waymark. And um, so, so I think that's, that's how we're going to have to take this story of Gideon, is that it's, it's addressing this history. Uh, that's connected to a past history. Um, now, what other things are there? There's some other points. Um, now, the number of days from uh, September 11, 2001 to November 9, 2019, was 6,633 days. It's, it would be really neat if it was 6666 uh, to address this verse that's the 6,666 verse, but it's 33 days short of that. Is, is there any significance that we can see in the number of days between 9-11 and 11-9? Maybe this is something we can find out later. If you went um, 6666 days, Iran says it goes to 1212, 2019. Okay. And the significance of that would be 12 times 12 is 144. Would that be the significance you see there as a symbol? That was the main thing I was thinking, I guess. Yeah. I also think that it's the 33 is a symbol as well, right? Because it's a symbol of the third day, the three days. But there might be something else that we just don't see there yet. Because 33 is three times 11. But, and three times three is nine. I just thought it was interesting that uh, the 66 and then the 33, you know, the division there, the divided by two thing. Yeah, so so there's something there, but I mean it's it's not a major point. It's a tertiary support at best, but there might be something else there. But what we can say is, I don't believe we're off track in tying nine eleven and eleven nine together, and placing that this this prophet had given this message. We have an angel of the Lord coming down, which represents nine eleven, 
but we can see that this movement is a zoom into either 9-11 or some other way mark. And um, Angela points us to John 6.33. So we had looked at John uh, 6, 6, 6. But John 6.33 says, for the bread which the bread of God is he which cometh down from heaven and giveth life to the world. So you can see that this is the coming down of Christ that's being referred to in 633. <clears throat> so, so there might be some connection there. Um, there's also a lot more of things that we could look at, but I don't want to. Uh, it's just too much to address, but because we want to get these things on a line. So, so the angel of the Lord appears to him, right? Um, and then he's going to talk about this deliverance from Egypt. So what did we say about this deliverance from Egypt? Why is he referencing this? If you remember how I looked at this, this is partly why we looked at the chart. I'm sorry, your question again, please. So he refers the, to the deliverance from Egypt. What date did the deliverance from Egypt occur on? On the uh, biblical calendar, it's the 15th day of the first month. On the Jewish calendar? It was in 1533. It's in 1533. It was in 1533. April 26th. It's going to be April 26th. 1533. So April 26th is this symbol of the 26th day of the fourth month, which is used in providing the date July 18, 2020. Right? Right. Okay. And, and we had looked at this chart here. So I'll just share this again. Right. And we had had this symbol of April 26, 1990. If you count 11, 1,900 days, it's going to bring you to November 24th, 2022. 11 times 24 is 264. So we have the symbolic date. We also have the 1,111 days from November 9th to November 24th, 2022. And then we talked about the bread that come down from heaven. Angela brought that up. And we know that the manna falls from the first time the manna falls to when they go that it doesn't fall is 40 years less a month and that's 14,588 days right if you count to the last day it f actually fell and you count it inclusively or ordinarily it'd be 14,587 um so we have this symbol of 40 years less a, um uh 40 years less a month now i don't have it on here but for me personally, from the day I was baptized, December 25th, 1982, November 24th, 2022 is 40 years less a month, uh, including November 24th, the entire day ending on November 25th. So my 40th uh, anniversary of my baptism is coming up December 25th. So, so we had all of these symbols, right? We can connect this April 26th symbol, uh, to our time, right? We have it here connected to November 9th. We have November 9th um, uh, tied with this symbol uh, of 168 days or 168 years to April 20th or 168 days. 168 hours is one week. It goes to April 26th. We have 10,271 days, which that number 10,271 is the 1260th prime number and it's two to the power of seven times three times seven so you have that 273 um and that goes to june 9th of course and then it's 518 days to november 9th 2019 which in reverse is august 15th right of course the 252 the 586 the 273 all of these different symbols and this is showing us that this story of Gideon is connected to um, 
to our history with all of these symbols. That, that's the way that I'm taking this. But it, it reaches back, right? The story of Gideon, because it's going to be 40 years, right? That he rules or he is the judge. Correct? So that's why we're looking at the 40 years. And 12, 12 might be expressed as six plus six um, times six plus six or six plus six, six plus six, yes. Okay, so a good point there by Iran. <clears throat> so I hope it's not becoming so too esoteric, too hard to sort of, um, to see it in a simple way. So we can see this simple way in which the story of Gideon is Stop. November 9th that it's going to begin, 2019. But it reaches back to the past because of this prophet, right? Which is, is Jeff. That's how we're taking it as we're applying this. And then he refers back to Egypt. And again, Egypt is April 26th. So, I mean, that would be fairly obscure for most people because most people aren't going to know when the Israelites came out of Egypt, that it's in 1533 for one, or also that it's April 26th on the Julian calendar. That they go out with a high hand, right? But he's referring back to this time. So that means the message of July 18th is referring back to an earlier message. And the Lord looked upon him in verse 14 and said, go in this thy might, and thou shalt save Israel from the hand of the Midianites. Have I not sent thee? So the purpose of this message is to deliver us from strife. Right? That is, this message is to bring about a confession and repentance, an upper room experience. But it's going to have a disappointment attached to it. The Lord said unto him, surely I will be with thee, and thou shalt smite the Midianites as one man, right? Now, of course, he says he's poor, right? His family is poor in Manasseh. He's the least in his father's house. And, you know, we can see that this message has been despised, the message of July 18th, by the movement. But it's going to become the prominent message for this movement. And then he's going to ask for a sign. So we got these signs. Now, the first one is he's going to make this offering. I mean, and there's lots here. I mean, we have he gets a kid of unleavened cakes of an ephah of flour. And, and he's going to then take this flesh, put it in a basket, and he put the broth in a pot, and he brought it out to him under the oak and presented it. And the angel of the God said unto him, and the angel of God said unto him, take the flesh and the unleavened cakes and lay them upon this rock and pour out the broth. And he did so. And the angel of the Lord put forth the end of the staff that was in his hand and touched the flesh and the unleavened cakes. And there rose up fire out of the rock and consumed the flesh and the unleavened cakes. Then the angel of the Lord departed out of his sight. So what is this? Where would we place this? What is being symbolized here? Well, it was an offering. Uh, you know, it was supposed to be a meal, but right. uh, it turns out that it was an offering that was accepted. Okay. Now we also see a Terry, right? Where okay, so and again, yeah, Dwight. Okay, so the the question is, what are we seeing here? Mm -hmm. If this is if this is indeed an offering, is not the presentation of the message of July eighteenth an offering? Mm -hmm. Now, then you have the tearing that comes after this, right? Well, uh, the tearing comes before the offering is prepared. 
So we how do you see that? Where where is it? Well, um, so he's in verse eighteen. He says, "Depart not hence, I pray thee, until I come unto thee and bring forth my present and set it before thee." And he said, which would be the angel, "I will tarry until thou come again." Right, and then Gideon went in, made ready a kid, unleavened cakes of an ephah of flour. I just didn't spot that. Thank yeah. you. Unless he put in the basket, etc. So you have this tearing that occurs before this offering is given. Okay. Right. Okay. Acceptable. Because there it is in black and white. <laughs> Yeah, so Angela puts up, Moses drove with the Egyptian 40 years before the Exodus. There certainly was a tearing of 40 years before he was ready to deliver the Israelites. So, I mean, we have many tarrying times. Um, but I hear we're, we're, we're going to say this is November 9th and that we're going to have a tarrying time. But isn't the first day at the first month, isn't there a tarrying time after April 19th? Uh, um, yes okay so during this tarrying time while the angel tarries here um, this message of July 18th is going to be constructed presented that's acceptable okay I mean th th now there's of course unleavened cakes so that means they're not leavened with sin that this is a pure message. It's in a measure that's an ephah. And what is the ephah? It is a unit of dry measure, but what kind of a measure? Well, but where do we have this as a symbol? Uh, in the sanctuary service, isn't it? Zachariah 5. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Zechariah chapter five. Um, and I spelled it wrong here. Yeah, so it's Zechariah chapter five. Um, now it's mentioned other places, but this is the one I was thinking of. And it's the vision of a woman in a basket. And so it's an ephah is measuring something right yeah it's measuring and he said what is it right so an angel talked with me went forth and said unto me lift up now thine eyes and see what is this that goeth forth and he and i said what is it and he said this is an ephah that goeth forth he said moreover this is their resemblance throughout through all the earth and behold, there was lifted up a talent of lead, and this is a woman that sitteth in the midst of the ephah. And he said, this is wickedness, right? So this is a measuring, an ephah is used to measure judgment. Okay. Right? So, I mean, there's more to it than that. But just in the simple way that we can look at an ephah, it can be a measurement of judgment. Okay. So right. This is the message that's judging God's people. Okay, Dwight. Okay, but if it looks like there's some controversy as to how much this is actually measuring, because some would have this be 22 liters, which yeah. is a symbol of restoration. Uh, of restoration, and some would be saying that it is 23, which would be one half of the number that we would assign to the sanctuary. Yeah, but it also be a symbol of the 2300 days. Correct. Yeah. So depending on, on the um, references, we'd also have to look at Exodus 1636 and Ezekiel 4510. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so Exodus... Um, 1636. Yeah, and Omer is the 10th part of an ephah. All right. And then the other one was Ezekiel 45 10. Ezekiel 45 10. Yeah, ye shall have just balances and a just ephah. 
and a just bath. Right. And, and that's going to be in Ezekiel 45. We're going to talk about uh, all these different measures, right? That's in, in the temple. And, and you're going to get the, the one dealing with uh, how to measure the manna, right? The, the measurement that is uh, used in Daniel chapter 5. And the meaning, meaning, take leave farce, right? So, <clears throat> so all I can say is that this, th what's here, this ephah is showing some kind of measurement, which is often referred to as judgment, right? Because it's something that's just that can uh, measure something that's wicked, right? Does that make sense? Yes. Right. <clears throat> Now, then he offers this. Now, the oak, what would be the symbol of the oak here? We didn't, we didn't quite address that. Uh, we, we sort of hinted at it a bit. Um, the question is, does the oak relate to Nashville? That's the simple question. Okay, so Iran says Oak Ridge. Now, what is Oak Ridge? Oak Ridge National Laboratories. Where right. they develop the uh, atomic. Right. So they develop that that atomic bomb that's going to be uh, exploded at midnight. Um, so um, Angela brings up Revelation 6, verse 5 and 6, also uh, regarding the EFA. But, and, and I would say yes into the question, is this relevant? Because um, these are going to be the pair, pair of balances that are talked about in verse 5 and in 6.6. Six. I heard the voice in the midst of the 4B saying, a measure of wheat for a penny and a measure of barley, measure, and three measures of barley for a penny, right? So this is, of course, about judgment, right? Measuring, whether it's length or weight or, or volume or anything, it's about judgment, Measuring has to do with judgment. <clears throat> now, so this message is prepared and it's going to be put upon a rock and it's going to be consumed by a fire. Now we have this Oak Ridge. So we have this, this message of July 18th dealing with Nashville with the atomic bomb. And when this message is given, we expect something to occur. We expect a fire. But does a fire come and actually consume the flesh on July 18th? No. <laughs> well, I mean, symbolically, does it? Somewhat. Because this becomes a test. So here it's a test where he's you know, is this an actual angel from God? And in a sense, July 18th is that type of test, but it's testing us. Yes. Right? So, so some people fail this test. They say, well, nothing happened, so July 18th wasn't from God. And, of course, they could use the same argument for October 22, 1844, because nothing apparently happened. Well, they don't even see it as a test. Yeah. They just see it as, you know, we were all wrong. Right. But, but they don't see how much it parallels October 22nd and what they're doing, how they're paralleling those who rejected October 22nd after the disappointment. Which is very amazing. Yeah. Now, they would, you know, one of the arguments brought, well, the next day, you know, Hiram Edson had this vision. But, of course, it wasn't general knowledge until in, into the 20th century. Right. Yeah, some 60 years later. Yeah, so so sure, Hiram Edson had this vision, but only him and a few of his friends knew about it. Hiram Edson was not an important person in the movement. That's right. Happened to be friends with uh, Crozier, and they study this together. But it's going to be not until 1845, or when is it? No, 1846, that Crozier even publishes this, uh, you know, what they studied. And no mention of Hiram Edson's vision. So, so the idea that somehow, you know, the whole movement was going to know the next day 
what happened, what July 18th meant was a false argument. Plus, I already did know why the disappointment occurred. I even knew before, right? So I, I knew that the disappointment wasn't just possible. It was, it was probable, though I didn't want to see it in some ways. But I already had the answer. So I presented that the next day. And I even presented it on the 17th. So um, of, of what would happen if it doesn't occur. So, so yeah, the whole idea, I think, is, um, is a problem of how people don't realize they're fulfilling prophecy and, and they don't understand Millerite history. So, so here we are, we have this offering. Now, I think we could place this offering, though, at a more specific date that the offering is set out. What date would that be? Could we say June 21st, 22nd, 2020? Is that when the movement sets out the offering? Yeah. <clears throat> okay, the angel of the Lord. Uh, June 21st, uh, the angel of the Lord put forth the end of his staff that was in his hand and touched the flesh and the unleavened cakes. And there rose up fire out of the rock and consumed the flesh and the unleavened cakes. Then the angel of the Lord departed out of his sight. So would this be June 21st when we publish uh, the article in the Tennessean? Did, did God's angel touch that publication? Absolutely. Because <clears throat> it was broadcasted around the world, right. but it was only supposed to be for now. Yeah, so that's going to be June twenty second. That's Judges six twenty two. When Gideon perceived that he was an angel of the Lord, Gideon said, "Alas, O Lord God, for because I have seen the angel of the Lord face to face." Was this not an evidence to this movement? What happened on June twenty second? that God was leading this movement in the publication of the warning to Nashville. I would think yes. Okay. Uh, to me, it was a very powerful witness. And, you know, I was on social media um, because there was this reaction from the church, from Adventists, showing clearly that this was uh, something that we had to do that we needed to present this message. So I was defending it on June 22nd. You know, so Adventists, of course, are going to notice this. Um, <clears throat> so, so I think that these verses, the numbers of these verses definitely apply to this. So we can take this uh, this message here that's here um, is getting ready of the kid. This is the development of this and the unleavened cakes and, and setting this out. This is us preparing this message, but it's going to be on June 21st that the angel is when we, when we put that out, that the angel touches this message. That's this warning to Nashville. And it's going to be demonstrated the next day that God is behind this message. That's the way that I took June 22nd, what happened. Because that was a miracle. Wasn't that a sign? I believe that we uh, talked about it as being a sign, yes. Yeah. Now, there were people in the movement who were actually quite embarrassed, even on June 22nd, about the public reaction to, um, to the publication of that message. That is, they felt it shouldn't have been done in that way. I don't, I don't know if people remember this. And, and these would be the same people that were embarrassed 
uh, when July 18th did not occur. So, so I think we can date that, you know, we, we can, we can draw that on the line. We can put November 9th as this angel coming down. And, and during that period of time, we're going to be developing this message and it's going to be published on June 21st. And then uh, we see the miracle on June 22nd, 2020. Um. And then in verse 23, the Lord said unto him, peace be unto thee, fear not, thou shalt not die. And Gideon built an altar there unto the Lord and called it Jehovah Shalom, that is uh, Jehovah's peace. And unto this day, it is yet in Oprah of the Abba, Abba Ezraites. And it came to pass the same night that the Lord said unto him, take thy father's young bullock, even the second bullock of seven years old, and throw down the altar of Baal that thy father hath cut down the grove that is by it and build an altar unto the Lord thy God upon the top of this rock in the ordered place and take the second bullock and offer a burnt sacrifice with the wood of the grove, which, which thou shalt cut down. And Gideon took 10 men of the servants of his servants and did as the Lord had said unto him. And so it was because he feared his father's household and the men of the city that he could not do it by day that he did it by night. And what would this be referring to? How would, where would we put this on the line? We have all these different symbols. We have the bullock that's seven years old, the throwing down of the altar of Baal. Is there a work that's going on in this movement from June 22nd onward? Not for all of them, but yeah. Okay. Or is this is this something that's that's um, illustrating even after July 18th? Well, I could say definitely after 18th for sure. Okay. But it was being built upon prior to that. Okay. So, well, yep, yeah, Dwight. Okay. So we have Gideon and the 10 men of the servants. Yeah. I think that's, we're being shown that this is not 12, this is 11. Okay. Does this give a, a type of reference like the number of disciples after the suicide of Judas and after the cross? That's possible. Though, I mean, I look at 10 as being, uh, it symbolizes a 10th, it symbolizes a remnant. I understand, but we've got the 10 servants and Gideon. I know, I understand that. Okay. But I'm just saying I would look at the 10 as the primary symbol here. Because, I mean, Gideon is representing here. Uh, the message of July 18th. And, and this is a work that, that needed to be done. Now, now, part of the thing with July 18th, um, so back on April 26, 2020, I'd sent Jeff an email um, showing that um, we shouldn't ex we, sh we could see the possibility that it's going to be a failed prediction. Now, Jeff, in this period of time, he's going to uh, be doing presentations, Daniel's last vision. And it seems that he's, he's, he, it seemed to me that he was leading to taking, uh, you know, going into my presentation that I sent him. He said he was going to watch the video, said he was going to read the, the study, but he never did respond to it. And he never did go that direction. He started to, he started talking a bit about a disappointment. He talked about um, uh, the story of Jonah um, 
and also, of course, paralleling this with Abraham offering up Isaac. So, so we could see that this, and, and even the story of Gideon, of course, which we had been um, studying for quite a while. So now we have uh, this history in which we're, we're finding all kinds of light, and Jeff is sharing some of it, right? So he's going to be sharing things um, that, that are being found by Odilio and Stephen and myself. But when, when does Jeff stop presenting prior to July 18th? Because we're going to see Daniel Fontenot presenting. And, 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 and the question is, why? Why is Daniel Fontenot presenting? I mean, there's a reason why. Any, anybody remember all that history? I'm not remembering quite why Daniel Fontenot was presenting so much. Okay. Yeah, that never really came up in the studies I was watching. I mean, and a behind the scenes situation was the the situation with Daniel Fontenot was the other situation that had occurred after July 18th because it was made very clear to me that there was an issue between Daniel Fontenot and Larry Hine. Yeah. Okay. So, so we're going to have, um, uh, so I'm just trying to find this here. When Jeff last presented. Okay. So Daniel's last vision. Seems like they've cut out a bunch of his stuff. They did. How, many, how many presentations did he do? It depends on what site you're going to. If you're going to the School of the Prophets, they say 34. There's another site that's saying something like 51. Okay. They actually have 35 here. They have April 29th All right. as, as the last one. So, yeah, so anyway, we, we, we kind of need to find that date, but I, I'm going to go through my transcripts. I have transcripts to a lot of the stuff that they pulled. Yeah, um, and I have all the videos on my computer, but um, I sort of feel it's around the time that we do the publication. I mean, he doesn't stop completely, but, but then we're going to have Daniel Fontenot presenting. And um, the, the thing for me personally is, is I don't understand why I'm not presenting anything. And, and it's not, you know, from like a personal hurt feeling or anything like that. It's just, I could be answering lots of the questions that people had and could be presenting uh, some of these other arguments. Um, but there doesn't seem to be an interest in that. So, so, so I know something's going on but I just don't know what it is. So after July 18th, I mean, it becomes pretty evident what was going on is that there was lots of a dissatisfaction with what I was presenting and what I was doing, right? So, um, so when I look at this, this 10 men, um, can this symbolize the people then who are going to actually accept July 18th afterwards? Is that the remnant? that they're actually doing this work of tearing down the altar of Baal, that there is an altar of Baal, which remember, this is the thing that is allowing the Midianites to come in. They're worshiping a false God, right? So is this symbolizing something that this movement has not dealt with? Yes, it could be. Okay. The so, possibility is definitely there. 
Okay, so because I think that you know what this July 18th has been all about is is a work that has to be done within this movement, an internal work, and that we don't see in this movement why why things are happening the way that they're happening. We don't see that we're unconverted. And this tearing down of the altar of Baal is a work that's being done in the understanding of biblical chronology. Now, when it says they not do it by day, but do it by night, that's why I bring this up. Is this work that we're doing, is this in the front of the movement? No, it's behind the scenes. Yeah, so we, we have to do it in the night, not because we wanted to, but it's not, there isn't the interest uh, for this, what we're doing, what we're studying, that's going to show the disappointment of July 18th. There's no interest in it. Now, I wrote a paper um, dealing with the Mayan calendar. And, and this paper, when I first submitted it for the, 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 um, the website, um, it was rejected because I had links to other things. And for some reason, um, and I'm not sure why, there was probably something behind it. It's probably because I had links to my own uh, academia site, to my other papers. And they didn't seem to want to have links to anything else. So I had to take out of all, all of the links out of my paper so that they could put it on um, the July 18 website. And, and so I did that and they posted it, but it was quickly taken down again. So they didn't want to have my paper, even though, you know, I had I complied with what they wanted. They didn't want it on their website. And, and, and it would have been important to actually to have that um, information that, you know, that this message, this prediction may not occur. Because that's what the paper was showing. This was pre- uh... 187, right? Yep. This is before July 18, 2020. So, so, you know, most people wouldn't know that, that I put up a paper, it was accepted, and then it was rejected. So first it was rejected because it had these links to, to my stuff and to Wikipedia. And somehow, you know, there was just this excuse, we can't have a paper that has external links. I'm not sure why. But then, you know, when it was finally accepted, it was only there for a short time, a few days. And then it was taken down again. So they didn't want that paper there. Um, and and so, so in a sense, it's being done by night. So, so that's the way that I understand this. I, I don't know if people have a, a different interpretation of where we could place the- Agreeable. It is agreeable. Now, now, we also have this bullock of seven years, right? So we have the symbol of the 2520, and that's going to be a huge part of, of this study that's going on. And really, when you reject all of the things that come out of the study of the 2520, aren't you rejecting the 2520 itself? Well, yeah. yeah. You can say what you want about it, but when you reject parts of it, yeah. You're rejecting all of it. Yeah. So really, um, those people that were rejecting this message, that, that the message had to be done in the night, were they not really worshiping at the altar of Baal? Symbolically. Symbolically, yes. Yeah, and, and that would be, of course, of idolatry, self-worship, our own ideas, our own thinking, our own opinions and views. Um, that's the strife that needs to be defeated. Human nature. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now. Um, that's so, a tough war. Yeah. So we're just going to look a bit here. So when Gideon destroys the altar of Baal, right? 
and and then the men in the city are going to uh, rise early in the morning and they see that this altar is cast down and the grove cut down and by it the second bullock was offered upon the altar that was built they said one to another who hath done this thing and they inquired and asked they said Gideon the son of Joash hath done this thing then the men of the city said unto Joash bring out thy son that he may die because he has cast down the altar of Baal and because he hath cut down the grove that was by it and Joash said unto all that stood against him, will ye plead for Baal? Will ye save him? He that will plead for him, let, it be, let him be put to death whilst it is yet morning. And if he be God, let him plead for himself because one casteth, has cast down his altar. Therefore on that day, call, he called him Jerubbaal, saying, let Baal plead against him because he hath thrown down his altar. Then all the Midianites and the Amalekites and the children of the east were gathered together and went over and pitched in the valley of Jezreel. But the spirit of the Lord came upon Gideon and he blew a trumpet and Abiezer was gathered after him. And he sent messengers throughout all Manasseh, who also was gathered after him. And he sent messengers unto Asher and unto Zebulun and unto Naphtali. And they came up to meet them. Meet them. Now, <clears throat> Uh, exactly where we're going to place this. I mean, I don't, I don't know if we have time to do that, but this is the next part that we have to look at after the altars are thrown down. And so where would we place this? And then we're going to see there's going to be the signs of the fleece after that. Now, now we could always take things and do a repeat and enlarge, but I do believe that this is happening consecutively that this is way marks at this point anyway in the story of Gideon. And, and we're going to have to draw this out and try to figure out what this line is about. So put down the dates and see how they're connected. And any thoughts on this? Any questions before we close with prayer? Because I do want people to consider this in before the, the study tomorrow. You're talking uh, from 6.30 down? Yeah. Well, yeah. So once they've destroyed the altar, what is this reaction? Because and, and, we're going to see the spirit of the Lord come upon Gideon, that is, upon this message of July 18. There's some points we're going to have to carefully consider before tomorrow morning. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So there's lots here. Yeah, there's a lot here. Okay. So, so let's close with a word of prayer. <clears throat> Dear Father in heaven, again, we are very grateful. And we know that we're struggling as we go through this history um, in our movement that there are points that we are missing. We feel almost inadequate and unprepared in, in these studies. There's just so much that we don't understand, so many things we've forgotten. But we ask, Lord, that you can continue to help us, help us to cling to you, to study your word, uh, to put away the distractions around us, and... Um, to be faithful in the little things you give us to do. Be with us throughout this week in this study. We ask, may your Holy Spirit work upon our hearts. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen.